Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Guess what? Today is. Today is the day that I pull the motor out of the donor truck. I haven't even showed you this. This is a truck, see it down there, 2500 HD, 2003, with a Gen 3 60 LS. That's going to be the motor that's going in Elizabeth's 1986 Chevy C30 crew cab dually that she named Johnny Cash. So what I need to do is get that truck one way down there. It's got the battery charger sitting on it, humming away, boiling away that junk battery. I need to get it in the shop so I can pull the motor and all of the good stuff that it's got on it is coming out so it can be reused in Johnny Cash. So take a look at this old cat eye truck. 2003 Silverado 2500 HD 6 OLS and a 4L80E. And from there, you're probably thinking, Steve, that doesn't look like all that bad of a truck. Why don't you just fix it? Maybe fix it, sell it, and buy a cheap engine. Because uh, this truck was bought for the 6 OLS that's in it. And if you look closely, down at the bottom, you'll see that that is a snowplow attachment. And if they were used to push snow, chances are they were also used to spread salt. This truck come from way up north in Pennsylvania where they get a lot of snow and they spread a lot of salt. And this is one of the rustiest trucks I have seen in a very, very long time. This thing is just barely holding together. It's, it's, it's junk. There's almost nothing on it that's good. 116,000 miles on the engine. That's not too bad. It does run because I did move it into this spot. I'm hoping it has enough transmission left in it. Forward gear, forward clutch is out of it. Hopefully it's got enough to just cruise up to the shop because that will be its last journey. Let me show you around this thing. You'll see it's junk, but it is a good donor as far as its motor goes. So let me just cut to the chase on this truck, show you some of the worst area up front. So this video is not three hours long. That's what holds on the tailgate. Look at this bedside. Look at that chassis. Just the bumper on this thing had to be hacked off with a sawzall because it was just hanging and was afraid on the trip home that it would fall off and you know not take somebody's windshield out this piece of plywood that's in the bed is probably worth about as much as the truck they didn't put this in here to protect the bed floor they put it in here so their bags of salt wouldn't fall completely through and uh, onto the ground uh, prematurely look at this uh, bracket tree that they welded on here to keep the tailgate on here's the other side yeah, that's your tailgate, uh, your tailgate pivot. Not on there all that well. Anyway, you get the idea. This thing is an absolute rusty piece of garbage and it's just crumbling everywhere. Oh, look, that's part of the back support. Just, I'm gonna need a tetanus shot if I'm not careful. But that's the chassis. So this thing's garbage, trust me. Although it does have a few good pieces on it, not many. So here is the reason why this truck was bought. Obviously, it's a low mile, relatively low mile, 6.0, 113, 116,000 miles. This was a snow pusher, this truck, so it's probably, you know, it's been used, but it does seem to run okay. It does, I did drive it into this spot. Like I mentioned, the transmission's out of this thing, the, the, I believe the forward clutch is out of it, because it being a snow truck, you know, went in, drive and reverse a gazillion times which is no big deal. It's a four-wheel drive truck, so I would have had to do some adapting on this transmission to the, I believe, the primary shaft and the, and the end piece because we're putting it in a two-wheel drive. Whatever. Got a two-wheel drive 4L80 up there in the driveway. What I want is this baby here. Not going to be changing intakes and all that stuff. Just got the truck intake on it. It's not worth a few horsepower gain for a thousand dollar intake. I'm not going to see how much money I can spend on this thing. I'm actually going to see how little I can spend by putting this in. Going to reuse the factory wiring harness because why would you buy an aftermarket harness when you can use a factory one? And it's hard to get a better quality harness than what the factory already did on this thing. So I'm going to be doing a lot of work. I just want to get this thing out, get it cleaned up. It's got horrible exhaust leaks. Uh, because all these did. Exhaust manifold bolts rotted off of them. This one's particularly bad because it was used to push snow. So a little bit of rust and stuff on things, but you get the idea. Still, the heart of this thing, I'm sure, is still good because they're hard to screw up. This little thing here has saved my day several times. A little battery-powered boost pack. Very, 
very handy. And they're small. You know, it's not like them big old carry around jobs that that you used to have to have. Now with these battery technology, uh, you can put a lot of power in a small area. And these things actually work really well. If you don't have one, you should get one. So hopefully this dude will start. So although it does have horrible exhaust leaks on both sides, this thing seems to run. It seems to run good. So this thing smells like a wet sock that somebody had used for an ashtray. It really does. Oh look, it's got the salt dog spreader attachment. Okay, does it have brakes? Where's four wheel low? 111,000. Yeah, so neutral, four wheel low. Four-wheel low. It has to be in four-wheel low, or it, it sl the transmission slips so bad it won't pull itself. Maybe it won't pull itself even. Now it does have reverse. Oh, there it goes. Shout, Cora. So before I get started tearing into this thing, and I'm not gonna be super gentle, I'm, just, I'm gonna save what's good, but if it's not good, it's gonna get no mercy. All I really want out of this is the engine. And you may be wondering, why would you buy a hot entire vehicle? And we'll go into that super quick. I wanna tell you the reasoning behind it, because if you ever go to do something like this, you know, it, it, helps to, it helps to know. If you've got the entire vehicle, you have everything that it needs to make that engine run. I'm not an expert on LS swaps. I've never done one in my life, and I'm not posing to be. But I have done some research, and that research told me to buy the entire vehicle because I know that I've got the matching PCM, the computer that hooks to this thing. I can hear it run. This is a 2003, so it's a drive-by-wire. There's no throttle cable in between the gas pedal and the throttle body. This one has a stepper motor that's controlled by the special throttle pedal that's in here and a TAC module, a little separate computer that goes in between the throttle pedal and the computer that tells the stepper motor how much to open. If you didn't get that stuff, it's gonna drive you nuts trying to find that stuff, not to mention nickel and dime you to death. I know I've got radiator hoses that I can use and in this truck, this radiator is swappable over into Elizabeth's trucks and I know that because I've seen people do it, so that'll save me a hundred bucks. Let's say, you know, this radiator's good, it's not leaking. So there we go. That saved money there. I've got the radiator hoses, all of that stuff, power wires, you name it, all of that stuff that you wouldn't get. Did you had you bought just an engine off somebody's pallet on Face Space that they say runs? You know, all that stuff you get if you get the entire vehicle, that is Obviously, if you have the space to store an entire vehicle, that's not an option for everybody, and I understand. But if you can, buy the entire vehicle. If it's wrecked, at least you know that it ran to the scene of the wreck. 4.8, 5.3, 6.0, doesn't make any difference. They're all great engines. You know, just get an entire engine, and, and you'll be much better off. Make sure you get the wiring harness, the computer that came with it. And if it's a drive-by wire, make sure you get the throttle pedal and the TAC module. Otherwise, you're going to be stressed trying to get all that stuff together. And plus, 
the other added benefit to buying an entire vehicle is that I can put the hood, you know, the grill, the headlights, the core support, any of that stuff that I'm not going to use, I can just part that out on face space and make some of my money back. And I bought this entire vehicle for about the price that I paid for this engine anyway. So there you go. That is the reasoning behind buying an entire vehicle versus buying just a partial engine that would drive you nuts trying to get together, especially if it's your first time. You've got space, buy the entire thing, and you will be happy that you did. Got the fuel tank, fuel pump, you know, may not use it, but I've got the option buying the whole thing. So let's get started tearing into this truck. and get the engine out of it. So in order to get as clear of access as I can to this engine, the entire doghouse is coming off of this thing. Well, goodness sakes, how many bolts is on this thing? Oh, I'm about to sneeze. I hate when you're about to sneeze and you don't. <laughs> so the front fenders on this truck are actually, actually really good. Oh, uh, I take that back. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Those fender flares on these trucks, you know, they look good, but goodness, the, all they do is hold a bunch of goo right up and next to the, to the metal. And then you end up with this. You see one little rust hole there, and you're like, oh, that, that truck's not too rusty. And then you get the real picture. Goodness. Oh, gosh. The, of the truck fell off there. Oh, goodness. Snow plow and salt spreader harness. Yeah, how would you like to install one of these? So there's our TAC, I believe it's a TAC module. Uh, I believe that's what it's called. This is the unit that goes in between the throttle pedal. So we need this little harness here, this module, and where it hooks to our uh, PCM. So we've got to have that with this engine to make it run with that throttle body that's on there. Or else, you know, it just won't work from my, from my research anyway. You may be able to adapt a PCM to non drive by wire. I think you can, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't never done that, but I know with this truck, if I want it to work as is, I need this module and the wiring harness and the pedal. Oh, so we've had a mouse calling this uh, fuse box home, which it doesn't matter because we're not going to be using this fuse box anyway. Although we could, we wouldn't have to modify anything on this harness if we didn't want to. There has been a mouse in here chewing a little bit. But that's okay, because we're going to go in here and, I mean, it's fine. The check engine light or nothing's on, so we do have a couple little chewed wires. There I'll have to go in and uh, in repair, and there's also one right here, two right here. 
not a big deal. We're not going to use this fuse box anyway. We're going to make our own little fuse panel because we just don't need this. critter I can't stand. It's nasty, destructive mice. They're horrible. Oh, so while you guys weren't looking, I had a guy show up and uh, evac the AC system. So that was environmentally friendly disposed of. We got four balls floating. Four balls, well, three balls. Minus 10 degrees, so that's pretty good. At least it does have antifreeze in it and, and it is and it is full, which is good. That means radiator's probably good. All the gasketry is probably good. So that's, that's a bonus. That's super easy to remove, two 10 millimeter belts. Take the harness out. You have to keep that harness in that uh, TAC module. But there we go. That's gotta go, that's gotta go in the new truck, or the old truck. Or Johnny Gash, whatever you wanna call it. Mm -hmm. I'm get a bar in between that. Watch out there, stuff. Mm. I gotta get in between that bell housing and pop it loose. Pretty sure I got all the bolts out. Good shake. Stuck. There, 
where she goes. Okay, free on that side. Come on, off on this side, please. Relieving itself. It's, it's relieved. That motor's relieved to be outside of that rusty casket that it's in. So we've got to get those fuel lines. Try not to break everything. Huh? That's antifreeze. We have to keep the Lulu away from it. That's more like it. Pulling this one was a pain in the tail. Because everything's so rusty, nothing wanted to cooperate. But we got it. Here we go, she is out. Finally, there's a pain in the tail. Easily. Yep. Yeah, put it in the thing. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Just let her down easy. Yeah, go ahead. That's a good stop. Thank you, love. on the stand. Look at that. There's your motor for Johnny Cash. Heart. Yep, that's Johnny Cash's heart. It just needs a good going over and cleaning up. So take a look at how rusty this piece of garbage is. Really, it there's nothing good on this thing. The only good thing about it is that the engine runs. I guess the front ends, front axle's good. The four-wheel drive does work. The transfer case is good. Obviously, like you've seen, pulling it in here, transmission's slipping. I'll probably pull that out and rebuild it, you know, just because, uh, you know, the, the thing about these trucks is that there's so many out there that spare parts, not, they're not real valuable, especially from a rusty hunk like this one. So, you know, the motor runs, and that's really, I guess, all that matters. It's going to be, hopefully, a good, a good donor. For, uh, for Elizabeth's truck. Right. We may use that brake booster. We'll see. Those lines and stuff are good. So, you know, it's got, it does have some usable stuff on it. So we got that big hunk of garbage out of here and now it's time to clean up this gigantic disaster.
Mm-hmm. Amazing how many tools it takes to do anything. So fast forward a couple days, I have taken a few hours and I've polished up this turd about as about as polished as she's going to be, at least for me anyway. I probably will change some of the rusty hardware, make it look a little more presentable. But as far as trying to make this thing look new again, it's so far away from that that you know, we're, we're not interested, really. What we want out of this engine is a good, reliable power plant for Johnny Cash, Elizabeth Screw Cab Dooley, that would get better gas mileage and be more user-friendly than uh, the 454 big block and turbo 400 transmission that that truck come with originally. It's a tank. It would have got eight to 10 miles a gallon, no matter if you're pulling a gooseneck trailer or you know it's empty on the inside. So this I'm hoping with, we'll have plenty of power to pull it. And with the 4L80 EU transmission with overdrive, I'm hoping, you know, 10 to 15 miles a gallon. It's hard to say. But this should be more, a little more user friendly, especially for Elizabeth. So that's kind of the goal here. Get her together a truck that we can cruise around in, not worry about getting caught out in the rain, have some fun with, and I think this is the perfect engine, engine for that. So I do want to show you underneath the valve cover because these were pretty bad, pretty bad about sludging up. You know, they were great, reliable engines, but they did suffer from a few things, and one was sludge. And a lot of that was because uh, people's short trips, not letting the engines get warm, you know, stuff like that. And uh, they were definitely known for sludging. So I want to pull off the valve cover, show you the condition inside. It's a lot better looking on the inside, I'll just go ahead and tell you, than what it is on the outside. I did put a set of headers on it. It's the cheapest headers, long tube, that you could buy on Amazon uh, because the exhaust manifolds were basically rot rotted off this thing, not because we're trying to make... Uh, you know, any bit performance more than what it is. In fact, it probably wouldn't gain a thing in factory form with headers versus the original exhaust manifolds. So, and they, they do look better, I will say that. So let me get you over here. Um, I'll show you under one of these valve covers, show you what it looks like. Um, getting those exhaust manifold bolts off. Oh gosh, that was a battle. Every one of them fought me. I'll show you those studs. But let me bring you over here, show you underneath, underneath one of these covers. So this thing is pretty crusty. I do want, I do want to replace this crossover line on it because it's, it's quite a bit rusty on the other side and that kind of concerns me. But most of the rest of the stuff really don't care about. I'm gonna replace a little bit of the hardware, the clips on these injectors. A couple of them are rotted, but for the most part, this thing I think will be perfectly fine. What do you expect for a motor out of a salt truck? But on the inside, it is very clean, at least in my opinion, for, for what it is. Uh, these were bad about sludging, and this one even pulled the pan off of it, checked the pickup screen, checked the O-ring on the on the pickup tube. And well, I replaced that uh, pickup tube O-ring and just cleaned out the pan. It was looked about like this. So very pleased with the cleanliness of this engine for for what it is. So that is that is promising. A lot of crosshatch left in the cylinders, no vertical scoring or anything. So I am optimistic that this will be a, a good engine. All the spark plugs, pulled all them, they all look identical to each other. So we believe all the cylinders and stuff are working exactly the way that they should. So just need a little, little bit of TLC and this thing I think will make a good engine for Elizabeth. I need to pick up this fuel line crossover though. That kind of concerns me. So there's all the exhaust studs, almost every one. Well, there's two here that I got out with vice grips. All of the rest I had to weld studs on the tops of them. I cut the heads off of them because they were so rotted to the exhaust manifolds and there was nothing left of the bolt uh, to get a socket on to get off. So I just cut the heads off and pulled the manifolds off of the, what was left of the stud there and then took a pair of vice grips on the ones that I could, worked them back and forth the Z in times till they come out. And then the others that I couldn't grip hard enough with vice grips, I just did the old weld on the nut trick. And it worked really well. The one, the one that was on this, this back side, it was broke off, uh, recessed. It was back in the cylinder head. And I still 
got it out the same method. Now I did have to weld a nut on it a few times because it broke off and didn't think it was coming out, but it did. So I got lucky there. So, the joy of working on old rusty, rusty crusty stuff. So there you go. All right, guys, that is all I've got for you at the moment. I do have a video in the works on the Brown and Sharp 618 MicroMaster. I've got a video in the works on the do-all bandsaw that I know a lot of the viewers who have been with my channel for a long time and enjoyed that project will appreciate. And I've also got a video completely filmed on everything that I've had to do to get where I'm at on Johnny Cash, Elizabeth's uh, crew cab dually. I've done a ton of work to it and I've got a pretty condensed video showing everything that I had to do to get there because I know there's a lot of people who would like to see that as well. So all of that stuff is, is in the works. Um, pulling this engine, what a pain in the tail. Man, what a rusty hunk that truck was. But, you know, there is a gazillion videos out there on pulling LS engines and doing LS swaps. It is exciting for me personally simply because I've never done a swap myself. I've seen a lot of people do it, but never done one. And I love stepping into new, you know, new territory that I haven't been into. It's just exciting to problem solve and work your way through it. I enjoy that kind of thing. That's why I have a shop is I just love working on working on stuff and trudging forward and learning things. That's, that's what it's all about for me. I do have a request that I don't ask my viewers to help me with, with anything. I appreciate it when they do, but I do have a request. If anyone can flash or program the computer for this thing, I'm just going to use the factory uh, ECM. I just wanted Johnny Cash to run like it did you know, basically factory. If any of you guys can do it, I would much rather pay a viewer of the channel than to pay some guy I don't know uh, to do it. So send me an email if you could do that, and I would be happy to have one of you guys do it. So I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. Elizabeth is ready. She's ready. She's pushing to get this thing done. So I've been burning the midnight oil. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.